All right. So this session, I wanted to basically talk about your final project. A lot of uh, questions come up and uh, it is good to start it early in the semester. We are in the fourth week now. So to start thinking about it is a good idea. Because the apps themselves, the topic of apps is uh, nothing new to all of you. You are basically, you are all uh, used to using your smartphones and using the apps. So that's, uh, that makes it easier in terms of planning, thinking right off the bat. Okay, let's see what your, what the expectations are going to be. And this will apply to both Android and iOS courses. So as you already know, we talked about it in the syllabus that the weightage for this project is 50%. So half of your semester's assessment is this project. Uh, really important to do a good job. You have a choice. You can work individually or you can work in pairs. And if you are working in pairs, you must inform me by week seven that you are going to be working with so and so. And also know that the bar will be set higher. If you are working with somebody, more will be expected of you because, you know, 50% times two. So you can expect that. The main, you know, the summary, if I could put it in one uh, sentence, what this project is, it is to design and develop a well-defined app. And let's see what that well-defined app and how we are going to sort of impose a definition so that we get a level playing field. Everybody is expected to be doing similar, you know, making similar efforts. So the question then is what would make an acceptable project? So these are the requirements that uh, we want the apps, whatever app that you work on for your project, it must meet these requirements at the minimum. You can go beyond this. So there should be at least three views. Now that we are uh, doing the tic-tac-toe app, you, you know, you will see what multiple views are in Android. We call them activities. In iOS, they are called views, view controllers. So you need at least three of them. <clears throat> and four if you're working in pairs. So just to give you an example, when you open your email app, you see a list of emails. That's one view. If you tap on an email, it opens the email for you to read. That's a sense, another view. So that's two. If you want to compose an email, that's the third view. So like this, we need at least three and four if working in pairs. And one of the important concepts we'll be learning over the next few weeks is how to use lists or tables. You know, in iOS, we call them tables. In uh, Android, they will be called, uh, I think it's called the list recycler view. So one of, at least one of these should be there in your app. It must have a launch screen. And launch screen doesn't count as one of the views. So it has to be separate because launch screen just comes, there is no interactivity, it disappears. It's like, you know, you see a logo of the company that made the app, things like that. And your app must use one other feature covered in class. Network calls, we'll look at how to make network calls. We'll see how to use maps, persistence. Persistence is to store the data or other topic that we have covered in class. Class That should be included in your app. And if you're working in a pair, then you must include one feature not covered in class. So you have to find out how to, you know, on your own, the two of you, whoever it is, you have to figure out how to do something that we have not done in class. That's the extra burden of working in pair, but it is justified, I believe. So when you're thinking about an app idea, pass it through this, uh, you know, this yardstick that it should meet all of this in your design and try to achieve a good balance of app logic and views and navigation. So what are you going to submit and when? 
Okay, by the way, uh, if you have questions, feel free to unmute and ask me because, you know, if you are on that slide, it is easier to answer it right then and there. I don't mind that. So, proposal on in week eight, oops, I would like you to submit a project proposal, maximum one page. In one page, I want you to write what is the app you are going to develop, you know, like a bird's eye view what it is going to do, who the users are going to be, what is the purpose, things like that would go in a project proposal. And then the following week, I would like you to submit a two page functional specification. So we'll talk more about it at that time. I will give you more information, what exactly you need to include in the functional app specification, but just, you know, in very briefly, it is uh, something like these are the views that we'll have. This is the interactivity on each view. This is how the user's you know, workflow will happen on the app. That is functional specification, how the functionality is, uh, it comes to life. And then the subsequent week, another document you'll submit the technical specification. Again, maximum two pages. And technical specification is basically you're talking about how now the internals of your app are going to, to work. So what, uh, what in terms of classes and methods you're, and you know, you will have what kind of a model if your, your app requires a model, which, which, you know, which manages all the information that your app deals with what it is going to be if you're if you're using any databases in codes we haven't we will not be looking at actual like sql type databases in this semester but we will be looking at simpler ones like the shared preferences so how you're going to use those so that is your technical specification and in the last week of the semester that's dedicated to uh, your project presentations in that week before the class, you will submit your Xcode or Android Studio project. And I will ask for certain other things, screenshots, etc. All of that will be due in week 30. And you will make a presentation. You will present your app to the entire class. So we'll try and do that session live and see if we can manage it. Uh, and this, uh, all of this, uh, these are the distribution of marks. So basically, uh, it's not one chunk of 50 in the last at the end. You, you have a good opportunity to keep on earning the credits for work as you are doing it. Okay, this is another important thing. If you are taking both the Android and iOS courses, and most of you are, you will develop the exact same app for both courses. I don't want you to be working on two separate apps. There's too much, uh, you already have a lot going on. So what this does is that because you're developing the exact same app in both, one, it gives you an experience, a real world experience, because wherever you go and work, if you work in this field, there are usually, you know, most of the apps are available for both iOS and Android. And many, many companies do native development. There is some. So you have a question, Mega? Can you please unmute and ask? It's easier. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to ask regarding the proposal, the slide that uh, we have to, you will share a template with us, uh, like how the structure should be and everything. So I will talk about it, what is expected of you. Okay. Uh, and I can look at a sample and I will, uh, maybe I can share a sample or I'll at least give you enough information so you know what is expected of you. So like by next week or like uh, before so that? This right? is due in week eight? Yeah, no, just the template. So the sure. template, I, uh, you know, let's, let's keep it for a couple of weeks from now. I'll give you timely. I don't want to give it to you now and it goes. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, it, it, we are in week four right now. So this, let's say, before your week eight is right after your reading week. Yeah. Right? So just before the reading week, I will tell you what is expected. Oh. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. 
Right. So what happens is when you develop the same app into, you get to see how in the real world this happens and the understand the equivalences between iOS and Android. So it's a very good experience. That's why we'll do it this way. And additionally, the benefit of doing it this way is that the submission of the first three items is common to both courses. So basically look at this, the project proposal, the functional specification and the technical specification. All of this happens before you're doing any coding, you're designing your app, you're designing the views, et cetera. So this, this work is common to the two courses. So you will submit the same document in both places. And what it does also is that you have more time to spend on the actual implementation and development. It gives it, you know, it frees you up. That's why I want you to do the same app in both. There is no choice there. It's not an option. That's how it is. So that's uh, more or less what I wanted to share at this stage about the project and like, I said earlier, on a timely basis, we'll look at what these different things are, what is expected. And I will, you know, provide you the information or samples of each of these, what is expected of you. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Thanks, Yogesh, for uh, telling about the project. So I wanted to ask uh, midterm about midterm exams. Uh, can you share like some information uh, so that we can start preparing right now or some like idea about it? So I haven't created the exam yet, but what you can expect is that it will require, it could be activities such as I may ask you to develop one or more apps they will be you know designed of just enough complexity that that can they can be finished within the time allocated for the exam or i may give you exercises such as i may give you an xcode or or an android project depending upon the course and that project may have bugs and problems and i may ask you to fix it or i may ask you to enhance what i've given you this is the kind of scenario uh, we are looking at it's going to be hands-on i'm okay. not going to ask you to describe to me the you know the theory or ask you questions descriptive questions about how to do something you will okay. basically be doing it whatever it is okay so it will be like live a live exam and uh, two three hours it's going to be like that right yes so we have a three hour allocation for okay. our time slot right now, okay. what I may do is I may design an exam that does not require three hours and open it up for the, so once you start, you will have, let's say, whatever time allocated. Uh, it could be less than three hours. It could be three hours. In that time, you have to finish your exam. And because everybody's in a different time zone, uh, I don't want it to be any, you know, a longer window also. So that's why in my announcement, I have asked, I have mentioned that the exam, we will schedule it between the hours of 11 and two, okay. the time in Barrie. Okay. So uh, that would be ideal that, you know, everybody does it in that period because it's a time also allocated to this course. So you, you won't have any other classes in that time. Yeah. Right. Okay, Yogesh, thank you. Uh, that's all right. All. Yeah, thank you for joining and uh, I will see you all. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye.